the reason, you know, partly that we wanted to talk to you guys today over at Pause is everyone is stuck inside of their homes. They're watching Netflix and everyone can't stop talking about this docu series, Tiger King. Uh, have you watched it yet? Uh, yeah, I, it was kind of in my job description to to watch that. Uh, they actually came and interviewed me for that show. No and, way. Yeah, they did. And and uh, in fact, the the uh, producer, I think he's been here a couple of times. And also he came to our conference and interviewed several people there, uh, including me again. So I after I saw what it looked like in the first uh, two episodes, I ran it through fast just to make sure I wasn't in it. I was I was never so happy not to be. <laughs> and, you know, it was, it was, uh, you know, it's gotten mixed reviews from the animal welfare movement. You know, a lot of people think it would have been better uh, to show more of the plight of the animals. But I, you know, the, the people in the show, to me, it, it wasn't uh, surprising. You know, I mean, people like that are the ones who wind up uh, running roadside zoos and uh, getting animals for, you know, carnivals and circuses and and pets. And so I thought it was good to show what kind of people wind up in that business. And and it's a and what an ugly business it is. You know, they I've always said you never find anybody with a, a kid at Stanford that has a tiger in their backyard. You know, yeah. it's always somebody who's on parole, has a drug problem, has domestic violence problems, goes to jail. Uh, I counted up the other day. We've taken 50 tigers from people who either went to jail or had been in jail. And so it didn't really surprise me that that's, uh, that, that, you know, that it was so shocking to everybody else.